Hey, uh, Stephanie's just got something going on, so she couldn't make it tonight, but we are more than better on quorum. We just need four to hear this case, so uh, I'll, I'll let Maria let us know when she's ready to go live. Are we live now? Okay. So I will turn it over to you, Chair. Okay. Good evening. Today is July 11th, 2023. Welcome to the Woodfin Township Planning Board of Adjustment. Uh, I'd like to open this meeting up by taking roll of the members. Uh, Ms. Gosnell. Uh, Mr. Deroni. Here. Mr. Hopkins. Here. Ms. Overbeck. Here. Mr. Young. Here. Mr. Hansen. Here. Michael Bennett here. So we have uh, Ms. Gosnell is absent tonight. With that, first thing on the agenda. Uh, let's see, that's the last one. Apologize. It should be approval of the minutes, actually. The excuse mm -hmm. me, approval agenda is the first thing. Okay. Um, call the meeting order. Okay, approval agenda. Do we have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is, is unanimously approved. Second um, item C would be the approval of the minutes from June 1st, 2023, which was a training session. Has everybody yeah, we do not have those. I was okay. going to get those, but uh, we'll get them ready for you by August. So, but we do have the minutes for June 6th, which is your regular meeting. Okay. Has everybody had a chance? Is there any question regarding the June 6th minutes? No. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, June 6th, 2023, regular meeting minutes have been approved. Uh, public comment. Ricky, do we have anybody signed up tonight for public comment? No, nobody has signed up for public comment. Okay. At this point. So we will close the public comment for this evening. Um, point E, we have no unfinished business. So that takes us to letter F, which is new business. Tonight we have a legislative public hearing. It's a request to conditionally rezone 89.7 acres located at 9999 Goodman Road from Mountain Village MV to Mountain Village Conditional Zone MV-CZ. The property is identified in the Buncombe County Tax Register as parcel identification number 9731-12-9772. The property owner is Charter Mountain Properties LLC and the project contact is Teresa Carroll on behalf of the property owner. Do we have someone for that? Yes, we have a landscape architect, right, Jason? Correct. And we have the engineer, um, Mark. John John, 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 John. I knew I was going to say the wrong name. But we do have the, 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 the design team here with us tonight. All right, so I'll get kick this off here for us. Uh, so as you said, it is 89.7 acres. It's actually at the northeast corner of Riverside Drive and Goodman Road. It is a fairly big parcel to be in a town. It's uh, almost 90 acres, as you see here on the center of the screen. To the left in blue and yellow R7 is the county's former landfill, and you probably know that by the solar farm that Duke installed, so that's to the left. Um, to the right or east here, uh, in the lower right corner is the former Altura development that's kind of like hanging out there. And we have some residential neighborhoods immediately to the south. Uh, residential neighborhoods to the north. Old Marshall Highway is about a mile further to the north. Uh, the blue box or the blue area to the south, that's actually MSD's uh, sewer treatment facility. So kind of gives you an idea of where we're at. Again, here's an aerial, as you see, it's like a wooded tract. It was part of, I understand it was part of Buncombe County's uh, holdings for a landfill at one point, but was never actually used for landfill. And so they sold this area off. And so now we have a residential development slated. Uh, the black lines were probably an original layout that the county mapped for 911 purposes, so those black lines or uh, roads do not exist at this time, so just don't get confused by that. But as you can see to the left, again, that uh, field in the upper left is that solar farm, and you can see the river on the lower left-hand side. 
this property does not front the French Broad River, but it is in close proximity. I couldn't see the river when I've drove up and down the road a couple times. I've not been able to see the water, but it's pretty close. Um, so here's a rendered site plan. It gives you a little bit better idea of like the housing layout, the road layout, and the phasing. So west to south at the bottom of the screen here, um, as you see, there's two entrances coming off of Riverside Drive, which is a state highway. Uh, they did have a transportation impact analysis, TIA, that was originally done for the first iteration of this development. Uh, that TIA has since, you know, it's too old. Uh, they're planning to move forward with getting that an update. Uh, that uh, TIA, Jason can have to correct me on the number, it was like about 285 or 290 dwelling units is what it had been modeled on. This is a 300 unit development of which 92 dwelling units will be like twin homes or like duplex style townhouses. That's kind of on the right hand side which is phase four. I'll point it out just for you. That's it. That's the phase four. That's the townhome area. Just for this side. The yeah. That's kind of the townhome area. So that's about 92 units. Uh, is, that, is this our side? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. We're talking about that. That's kind of the twin home area. Okay. The rest of the brown, the remainder of the brown boxes there are all detached single family houses. Um, they did a good job here providing the phasing. Uh, initially coming off Riverside is the red area is phase one. Uh, phase, two th phase two is in the middle. Uh, phase three is the northern portion of the tract. And then finally phase four, which is the townhome area. Uh, the one thing to note with the fire marshal's office is that there's only one exit off of Riverside Drive for that big townhome area. When you have more than 100 dwelling units, they like to have either a secondary access point, uh, which is at the top to Altura, which is not yet built, hmm. or require typically some other modifications or concessions. Some of that is usually a residential sprinkler system in all of the units beginning at number 100 would have to have like a residential sprinkler system. That'll be kind of just something to be aware of as you deliver, deliberate tonight. Are you saying that's an either or? Yeah, either you connect and have a second secondary access point, or, or you would have to have some sort of like, most time it's a residential sprinkler system. Okay. Uh, that's not like the normal commercial systems you see like in a apartment complex. If you'll also notice, uh, there's some blue areas on the left-hand side up against the property line. That is the steep slope area. So there is some property uh, that's above the 2200 elevation contour. It's approximately four and a half acres. Um, there's very minimum uh, way of land disturbance or impervious. Uh, top center, uh, Jason did provide us a calculation of about just about a quarter of an acre of grading in the four and a half acres and not even a tenth of an acre of impervious. So very minimum impact on the steep slope areas of this project. Uh, so that complies, so no modifications required for steep slope. Looks like they're preserving that. Uh, let me see here, make sure point out. Um, if you've driven by there, we'll go on down the slides here. Uh, if you've driven by, you know it's kind of, I would call undulating or rolling. As you move north, it just kind of rolls. And so you can kind of see here on the uh, master plan with the contour lines, there's a lot of stormwater ponds in here. And that's due to the no numerous number of little hollows or draws. And so to get the water that's required to be detained and treated for a stormwater plan, 
uh, they're having to put all these little ponds because there's like again little hollows and that's also the reason why the road system is so fragmented is there, there's you have to go down and up and down and up and so they stuck to the ridge lines so I'm gonna stop right there for a minute and see if you got any questions because I'm throwing a lot at you and it's a big project but um, I, I have a question with the second entrance for the fire marshal. Yeah. Would I ask that to the... They, they do have some information, but okay. I'm, I don't mind hearing the question, and if we need to, they can be thinking well, about it. If that is a sticking point, I was just wondering if there's any possibility of tying phase three to phase two, okay. road-wise. Yeah. That would, because that, and I guess in my mind, that would eliminate the problem, correct? Because then you would have a second entrance? Maybe. I think they may have another solution on that, too. Okay. We, we've talked about that. They're aware of that comment. Okay. Chris. I was going to ask a similar question, but yeah. not to tie phases together, but are there other possible locations that you could tie in? And, yeah. You know, given, and without, without me knowing all the contour and topography, yeah. you know, I'm sure they would have designed one if, if they could, but or maybe not. I, I don't know how steep the ridge is on the back of some of those cul-de-sacs or you know, anything like that. I, I will say that when me and Shannon rode out last week on the southern end toward Goodman, that does drop off very steeply, I'll say that. We, we did see that. It dropped off really quick off that hillside okay. uh, down to the creek so in Goodman. Okay. Yeah, it's, there's quite a bit. It's probably 50 or 70 foot of relief between the creek and probably that ridge line up there. Yeah, pretty, I, I know some of the other areas around there that that would be way up. When you're down on Riverside Drive, those are... Yeah. Uh, and if I understand what I read correctly, the DOT will not allow a third entrance on the highway, correct? That's what so. I understand as well. And we can have uh, the <coughs> can confirm that for us. I think Mr. Hopkins had a question as well. Well, you just answered it <laughs> when yeah. you said DOT would not have a, a, another entrance. It bothers me, it concerns me that at some point, I mean, you could potentially have 600 cars in there if you were figuring two cars per uh, home. And how is 600 cars gonna get out of two entrances on the Riverside that previously meetings I've been to, they talk about how crowded it is on Riverside. So okay. I'd like to know what that traffic uh, inspection study analysis it's going to say. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish out the pictures here, uh, and Jason will give it up to you. Uh, and, and yeah, because I had a similar question then too on the traffic impact, because the uh, uh, the I forget the name of the the Greenway Blue Blue Belt or the Green Belt project. You know, there's there's bicycles that are riding along that road that don't have their their bike lane yet and I, this is going to it's, it's going to be unbearable for both the bikers and the car okay. riders we, we have concerns we pull out good one every day and that's a concern we have oh I'm sorry I'm bad I didn't know that okay. uh, we're, we're going we'll open public comment here in just a little bit yeah I, I was, this is a question yeah. uh, so general, general elevations provided kind of roll through here just to give a feel of what they'll plan to build uh, here's at the intersection of Goodman looking north as you can tell this is actually the lowest uh, elevation of the property down that corner about 19 In the previous pictures those are pictures of other that's a house that's the kind of the theme or uh, feel they're trying to go for the development are those from, the, from, from that developer from uh, they, that was provided by the developer yes I mean, the, the, those were built by that same company. That, that, I, no, I'm not aware of that. Okay, okay. So there's another development just south of that that's up there. There will be similar houses to that? Uh, that I can't say either because okay. I know oh, it be. Okay. And this is about halfway up toward where the, the uh, solar farm's at looking south. And so, again, you see that there's an area where it does cut up quickly from Riverside Drive. And again, another southern looking view. You see it's kind of rolling, but a little bit higher up. And then at least for modifications for the CZ, uh, they're not including sidewalks uh, on the project, and, but they will have an interior trail network. And they're planning to use uh, LED fixtures 
for the street lights. And so we want to make sure that, you know, it's just the technology, everything's moved to LED, our, we got to update our code, uh, but we'll make sure it's still dark sky compliant. As far as sidewalks go, um, I think it's also worthy to note that that's about 3,700 linear feet approximately. I, I haven't rolled it off, but just measuring is about 3,700 feet of sidewalk that would not be installed along Riverside Drive. And as we talked about, it's really constrained. Um, it's not a very comfortable place to drive, much less walk or ride a bike. Uh, and then on Goodman Road, it was closer to 700 feet. Um, we did talk to the design team. Uh, staff would like, it's probably focused more on the Goodman Road side of the project. Um, there, there, it does at least, from my non-engineering eye, appear to be at least feasible for some sort of sidewalk or pedestrian alignment for the public along Goodman either right along Goodman and or cutting across just to the north of the creek back to Riverside Drive with the idea of preserving some sort of future connection, whatever happens along the river corridor in the future, whether that be back south, back toward uh, the River Mill itself and connecting back to the Woodfin Greenway Blue Way, or if there are things that are county level that connect further north back toward Weaverville uh, providing some sort of like connection and we know at some point Altura would come back or that project would come back and there's probably potential connections back to the east that could eventually lead back to New Bridge, Weaverville Road so we don't want to forget just today about the potential for pedestrian connectivity through this area. Um, Ricky can you point out Goodman? Yeah, Goodman. Please. It's at the uh, bottom it's, part. Yes, yeah, right here is Goodman. Oh, okay. And, and that road that comes off here to the very bottom, of, that's kind of with the existing, I guess you say it's almost like a gravel road for Altura. They kind of stopped. There's a gate right there. Uh, there is a creek that runs very close that kind of comes under the road and back out in the middle of the road. And this, um, that's a very narrow line crossing right here. I mean, it is very, there's no shoulder at this crossing as you close to the Riverside Drive. And now I'm just going to here. Um, right here's what we're talking about. That's all true. I and mean, you kind of, there seems to be potential for some sort of either sidewalk or off trail, off road trail to connect back to Riverside. And if, if we were to wave all this, we'd at least try to preserve some sort of connection with the school door. Something right here, yeah. Altura, Creed, Sidman, just right here. I know there's some challenges, especially on that western end, but just keeping that in mind. That in mind, um, so I know y'all got several questions about traffic and the fire access. I think we're going to get somebody with a different training and background on that one. Um, you have any other zoning related questions on that I can try to answer before we get Jason up here yeah I have one I, and I don't know if this is necessarily specific to this proposal but in general what is the uh, what is the designation of CZ on the conditional zoning on top of the NV ad yeah that's share? probably a very I, yeah, yeah start with the basics here yeah so it is mountain village and so everybody knows there's no minimum lot size no setbacks for mountain village at all uh, but in the past year or so the town adopted the conditional zoning districts and with one of the triggers for that is when you have 20 dwelling units or more so any development that subdivision apartment complex if you have 20 units it has to come through this legislative process and that's the CZ part of that. So regardless of the district that you have, then you have it it's like community shopping, CZ, that was the uh, Hawthorne Senior Living Facility we seen here a couple months ago. It was already community shopping, but they went to CS to CZ. Uh, the CZ basically says, as long as you're getting a site-specific development plan. So if this were to be approved, we're looking at a basically a layout like this, this road layout with 
this number of units in this sort of basic configuration. Uh, you can't put it in the bag and shake it all up and pour out something totally different. They couldn't flip the townhomes to the other end or uh, grade twice as much area. They're, they're going to be kind of tightly bound to this project. I mean, there's a little bit of wiggle room, but you're, you're not going to see something. Uh, uh, there's definitely not like a, a general rezoning that you see in where it's like you rezone it and anything can happen. Like there could be a daycare show up or um, a doctor's office, part of M Mountain Village. That's not going to happen. Like here is literally, it's just going to be these residential units. So the applicant did not apply for a change. That's required because of our requirements. Yes. Yeah. And the only real difference is that they're going to have to basically stick to their approved plan and not go far away from it. That's correct. Okay. So it's this plan. This is it. But they are going from 176 units to 300 units, and it's my understanding is because of infrastructure increases. Correct? Is that correct? All right. Question. If well, Larry, we, we can't ask them yet because they have not been sworn in. Okay. Excuse me. You don't have to swear them in, but we, we'll get them up here in just a minute. We, we just want to hold your questions for them for okay. until we get to them. But uh, but that's basically correct. Like yeah. So you'll you're basically the project if it were to move forward and approved by town council, this is what would be built. Otherwise, if it's not, then it has to come back through this process again. If somebody wants to add more units or change the layout substantially, so. And, and that happens. That's why we're seeing some of these uh, previously approved projects in Woodfin are coming back. Uh, several reruns that we're having in town. Yes, sir. The, oh, I did a few. I'm going to wait until this morning. I, I guess one more question since you're still here. I can't tell from here. What is the road width? Uh, they'll have to be at least 20 feet. Okay. So it's the standard NCDOT subdivision road standard. So and then you're going to have off street parking? Yes, there's, and, and the setbacks, they've set setbacks or established setbacks proposed uh, to be deep enough to allow uh, vehicles to park in front of the units. Okay. So, because it is a ridge line, so they didn't want to push the houses too far down, uh, and they're measuring from edge of pavement, which is kind of easier to logically find on the ground for us, as opposed to the magic pen that nobody can find in their yard. And I heard you mention earlier that Mountain Village doesn't have minimum lot size. That's correct. Does, and that does that hold true then with that with that layout design? They don't have to follow up. Uh, no, they set route. their own standards. Yeah, they set their own width and standards. And now, I mean, you still have building code you have to deal with residential code. Uh, so they've got to make sure that their product fits on a lot and still maintain setbacks from property lines so they don't have to fire rate the walls and openings for a residential construction and they so they're, they'll make sure their product fits um, but you're not going to see obviously more lots crammed in because again you know it, it would allow them to move if the road moves a little bit they might get one lot here but they move it down the line just a little bit but you're correct no there is not a 40 foot lot width 60 foot lot width there's nothing like that and then as far as the housing design itself, I, um, in the descriptions along with Mountain Village, it would have um, requirements for types of uh, types of uh, roofing that the roofing that style that's allowed and things that go along with the with the uh, other developments in the area. I forget exactly what those requirements. Are, are they part of the Mountain Village? Uh, a lot of the word in Mountain Village is kind of like suggestive for single family. And unless um, a developer you know, conditions voluntarily certain design elements, the state law actually prevents local governments in the North Carolina from requiring certain materials, certain roof pitches, uh, window openings, we just can't in the state. Oh, so if okay. it's I, one thought to, I thought those were part yeah, of the Mountain Village. We can only do it for commercial. Yeah, Mountain Village talks about that, and it, it applies to commercial stuff, but it's kind of more suggestive. But we cannot require people to use wood, post and beam. We can't require shingle roofs over metal. We can't say if it's flat or not. It, it's the General Assembly uh, changed the laws about 
eight, nine years ago to prevent, because there was some debate about snout houses and garages in front and how you arrange a house, and the General Assembly just kind of has says, no, that's not what local government role is. Okay. So. But all these houses have garages or? Uh, I don't I don't know that one. I know there's a lot of parking. There might be some garages. I, I haven't we haven't drilled down into like that because uh, it's more of a conceptual plan at this point. So we're just required to have all street parking. And so if it's a single family house, it's got to have two parking spaces. So we'll be looking at that as me and Marie get single family house plans come in if it's approved over the next three or four or five years. We'll just look to make sure there's um, substantially complies with this plan and we make sure they had two off-street parking spaces and does it meet the height limit and that'd be about all limit of our review on that one okay any other questions for ricky all right all right so i'll let jason gillian he can kind of go back over the project a little bit me and jason's talked a lot uh, over the past six months um yeah 15 we've talked a lot over the past 15 years but on this project, about six months. Um, so, Jason, uh, I'll let y'all come up here and introduce yourself and give the role for the board. And I'll just run that back up. Let me know if you need. I do have my mouse, and we can all tap over to some other stuff. Um, would you mind just going to the vendor? Marie, am I doing something wrong here? <laughs> Marie does better than I do. What am I doing, Marie? Trying to, trying to put this in on the screen. What am I doing wrong? Did you just have it on there? I just had the PowerPoint up. So it's something, something's happened. On the mirror of the screen. But you literally just were. Did you have it in presentation mode on PowerPoint? It's just. Yeah, technology makes it. I mean, that, that's yeah. your desktop, isn't it, on it right now? Yeah, that's the desktop, but we're seeing it. it's not mirroring over. Oh. Uh, we're sorry. looking at stuff over here, but it's just not. Like I know. Sometimes roll out the old drawings, it's easier. Is that usually what you use? Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Hey, that's, that's over there, but we're just trying to get over to another exhibit to the render. So maybe exit the the slideshow, slideshow mode on PowerPoint. I was going to a different tab. Okay, show me. So that so it's not that's what's not. So, all you were in is that one. Yeah, that's one. You're in, right? Oh, yeah. It was doing it earlier, but I don't know if it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Technology mode. Are there any some questions about the. Oh, there we go. We're good. That's all you had to ask. Yeah. <laughs> it just took me a minute because I uh, uh -oh. stopped. Oh, <laughs> oh, you didn't say keep changes. Keep Sorry. So it reverted back. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It was working fine I was, earlier. I was that struggling because we were at PowerPoint for a minute. Yeah. What's the average lot size going to be? Is that it? <laughs> well, what? While we're waiting, could each of you state your full name and your affiliation with the project so we can have that for the record, please? Sure. Uh, I'm Jason Gillen with Site Design Studio. 
I'm a land planner, landscape architect. Uh, and I've been the planning lead and project coordinator for the developer. Yeah, uh, John Kennard, Brooks Engineering, and I'll be the engineer of record for the project. Thank you. Um, so I might, uh, I might take just a small step back just to get a little bit of history and then start to answer some of your questions. Um, so as it was mentioned, we are here before y'all a uh, year and a half ago, received approval for 176. Um, we've got some numbers back uh, on infrastructure costs, the road network, grading, uh, utilities, and of course, things have increased and the numbers weren't quite making sense to the developer. Um, so we didn't entirely go back to the drawing board and there's new regulations in play, including the steep slope overlay and the CZ process, which we did not go through previously. So we, we took a look. Um, we also understand in our region that there's a housing shortage. So we, we took that as a positive with respect to this project and the increase in infrastructure costs and said, what part of the market are, would we not be addressing from a housing perspective and how can, how can we increase density without changing much of the road network, make the numbers work and have a viable project. So that's kind of what, why we took a step back. So the difference between the road network and grading on this particular project, for those in the audience first, there was a little spur here that fed a cluster of homes here that was impacting the steep slope over there. Um, for the board, uh, off this, there was a, we were team and there was a cluster of homes in the road network there. So um, based on the requirements of the steep slope overlay, we eliminated that road section, period. Um, then we looked at a product type, which would be um, more of a cottage, narrower lot size. We, don't, weren't, we weren't looking at this project from a minimum lot size. I'll tell you, um, we were looking at it from a minimum lot width. How do we provide access to a cottage style product that's fed off of a ridge? and have it make sense. So the minimum lot width for the single family homes is 45 feet in width, and the minimum lot width for the town home products is 55. And the depths could vary, but on average, 45 and 55 to fit this style of product. Um, so when we started doing that based on the previous road network and the, the elimination of the one, unit this is how it started to lay out we did not change the road alignment on any other section we did not change the infrastructure grading we did not change the uh, utility corridors with respect to water and sewer um, with this increase in density there is an increase in stormwater requirements and ricky pointed that out with all the ponds so we will have to address that and we know that and be accommodated for that, okay? Um, so that is the increase in density. Um, with respect to NCDOT, there was a TIA done with a final decision, they call it, in, at the end of 2019, November of 2019. So we're nearing four years. It's dated, needs updated. We are aware of that. It's very expensive to do that. So we want to come to you to get secure, you know, um, some level of confidence that this project is, can happen from a town of Woodfin perspective. And we are going to be required to update that. If it comes back and it can't support this, then, and it can only support 280, we're going to have to decrease density. So the previous TIA, and I, it did both two things that would address single, there was some single family and some multifamily prior to the previously approved plan. It was 279 single family, is that correct, Ricky? I think you're looking at it right now. And 40 something multifamily. So overall density it was in the 330 range. But the way they calculate trips per day for multifamily and single family is different. So when we're talking 300 single family versus 279, 
we have to see what that difference is. In addition to density, uh, there's access points. The two access points that you're seeing off of Riverside are the locations approved by NCBOT, no more, no less, no different location, period. And it's all about horizontal sight distance with these meandering curves. So we cannot add a, a third access point. Um, Terrain-wise and traffic-wise, it doesn't make sense to go to Goodman Road. Um, and there's some other environmental challenges to doing that with the creeks. Um, from my understanding, there is verbal agreement between our developer and the Altura development regarding this access point through their development, which a portion of from where we connect to their property to where it's currently built is not currently fully developed. Could you drive a car through there today? Yes, but it's not final graded and paved. Portions of it are gravel. So from a fire and emergency standpoint, we would have to either one, improve that to some degree to gain access through there or to sprinkle phase four essentially of our project. When we get past phase one and phase two, we're over a hundred units and we'd have to sprinkle the last phase of this project, which is six to seven years from now. Should we start, you know, we're talking about a year and a half, two years per phase. Um, so we would hope at that point in time, we can resolve that and not have to sprinkle. But if we can't, that's an option for us. Can I interrupt one second? So sure. Ricky, is Altura has already approved? I'm not familiar with this one. Altura has been forever. I mean, since yeah. 2008. Yeah, okay. I think it's another one of them that's it's kind of dead in order though. Dead, dead. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so there isn't anything that's viable that's going to happen in the next 18 months, say. That's yeah, it's not that we're aware of. Okay. And maybe we might have connections with the property owner, hopefully in the next couple months or something, but uh, I know there's a lot of Lots have been platted that are very small, but we, me and Marie, haven't done any research into that project. All right, so basically for our decision, we're going to go with the assumption that that does not exist. Uh, and I can add a little color to that, too. I'm actually their engineer as well, uh, which probably benefits uh, both of these folks. There actually is a written agreement in place, I don't know if you knew that. Um, they, do have, they do have an easement through Altura to do this. Uh, the same is true the other way around. If Altura were to develop first, uh, and, and Riverside or later, they would have access through it. Uh, there's some other shared utilities like water, sewer, et cetera. Won't get into the details. As for timing, I don't know. I talk to them every 12 months or so. Um, so I can't really say what the timing is. I don't know, but uh, I will say they called me oddly enough this week and said they're interested in moving forward with Altura. So we'll see. Okay. We'll see what that means. Uh, I don't know, but but rest assured that connection is there. Uh, if for some reason something falls through or it's just wildly expensive, there is the option to sprinkle the remaining homes if we have to. I doubt I doubt it'll come to that. That's also a little expensive, but it's it's an option. Do the lots have to be developed before the road can be put in nope. there, or can you put the, you can put the road in yes. up front? Yes, we have to permit it and, and get all the appropriate permits: storm, erosion, etc. Uh, zoning, but yes, you can build a road without without the lots. And that could be utilized as a third exit. Correct. There, there is a, a neighborhood over there. Uh, I mean, you're not going to be able to do any kind of. They call it a, a what is it, parkway, uh, and I mean, I can't even imagine how that would be a parkway going from here through to um, Mills Place. That's the road that it would end up on before it spilled into uh, 26. Wind Whisper, Wind Drive. Wind, wind, yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a whole, Wind Whisper is a, a, a lot of very expensive homes. Um, <laughs> and um, and I, that's where the connection is, I think, at the top of Wind uh -huh. Whisper. Uh, there's, so there's two connections. You can actually drive. Uh, if, they, if they were to move the gate uh, there on Goodman Road, you could drive a car from here up and over um okay. into uh to, to 26 so that road does exist it's kind of a gravel half but so it's area. not through that neighborhood there's another road that actually it's through altura the altura neighborhood um 
So the, the but there, that, there were two know, houses that went bankrupt on it. There. Yeah, you don't go through the expensive home neighborhood. It's yeah. kind of on the back side of the apartments. Oh, okay. That okay. Lines up yeah. there that feeds Altura, and then you drive through Altura. It's multiple like turns. It's several yeah. roads okay. intersecting. Yeah, so it's, it's not going to be a confusing. speed place. People can. No, can it's, uh, it's okay. a main thoroughfare all all the way to the gate at Altura. There's not many homes off of that road behind us. Okay. And Altura is a wooded lot right at this point? Uh, no, no, it was it was pretty heavily developed yeah, in was, 2008. Was, it's was fairly clear cut. Yeah. It's, oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they actually started construction. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, I haven't. I have not looked at that. Very of elegant homes that. And there, there's a road network I would say halfway through it yep. to or, to connect to this location. Oh, okay. And if you go through that gate, you can drive a vehicle all the way to this property line yep. okay. where we're showing the access. Line. And when you say a gate, does that mean it's open all the time, or is that something that's open and closing? Right? Currently, it's closed, but just because there's nothing, it's because that development. But it would become a permanently open yes. gate. That's right. Yep. I'm assuming the gate is nothing that the fire department couldn't get through if they wanted to at this point. Yeah. So, what has to happen if you're interior? You have to allow the public to exit. And then for that emergency, they would have some code or access to get through the gate themselves. In case of emergency. Oh, so the fire also wants an emergency exit, not just for them to have access to your. Okay, I misunderstood. Okay, so it's not just them getting in, it's also they want the residents to get out. Correct. Okay. It's both. Um, so, and then with respect to, to sidewalks, both uh, on street public roadways and then on-site development. Um, like we said earlier, the majority of this road network follows the ridges and we're feeding homes. It's an efficient layout in terms of road infrastructure and, and housing development. Um, we've opted uh, and are proposing not to have on-site sidewalks. It'll then push the development of those homes and parking further away, more impact to grading higher heights in the rear based on the ridge ridge approach. Um, so we're, we're proposing in lieu of that, a series of um, nature trails uh, that feed the draws uh, and have ac access points to um, Riverside Drive. With respect to Goodman, for us to, uh, oh, let's take it, sorry, Riverside Drive. Um, very challenging. We understand that there may be a potential for an NCBOT bike and ped study. Um, we've been made aware of that, and this developer is committed to providing a 15 foot easement for whatever comes out of that study. Is it a bike lane? Is it a bike lane sidewalks? Um, is it, we, we don't know what the ultimate result is of that study, but they're committed to designating a 15 foot easement on their property to accommodate bike and ped facilities via that NCDOT study. On Goodman, um, I think. Sir, yes. you're saying that'll be right along the riverside? Yeah, and it's it's a little difficult to see, but we've highlighted that in okay. red, yep. and we, we label it as such yep. up there. Okay. But just an easement, no development? Correct. Okay. Because we have no idea what the result of that study is going to be, and they may say, they may determine it's too busy or dangerous to do this type of ped facility or this type of bike facility. We don't know what the results are that, but we're committed to working with them to give them land to make improvements. With respect to Goodman, and I think um, some adjacent neighbors would agree, I think it'd be very challenging to provide side sidewalks either attached or detached to Goodman Road. Uh, there's an adjacent stream, and when you think about stream and 30-foot top of bank buffers, I don't know where we put an, a sidewalk along Goodman. And we are currently showing a trail connection along Goodman to tie in and hit on the north side uh, of the creek, as Ricky was mentioning, that would provide access to Riverside Drive. Are the white dotted lines the trails? Correct. Okay. And what will the surface of those be? Are they going to be macadam or? Um, we, we haven't determined that yet. Okay. Um, we, we see it more of a softer surface, 
gravel screenings type of trail, uh, nature trail. So all within the 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 neighborhood itself, you know, if cars are going. So that's a shared road then between cars and all the kids who live in there, right? And For all intents and purposes, sidewalks. yeah. It's, it's a even though this parcel is in an urban setting, it's very rural and the terrain is as such. Um, and it's pretty atypical to see sidewalks on, in some of these rural mountain communities. And that's how we feel that this, this project is saying, saying that. So that's where we're opting for the trails. Um, you know roughly how many feet of trails you have in I, depth? We have not calculated that, but that's something we can easily provide. I'm just looking at it from my experience. So I live in Riverwalk, which is right off Riverside Drive. We do not have sidewalks. It was supposed to have sidewalks, but they never put them in. So it's a problem because people want to walk their dogs, you want to ride your bikes, and we are up and down hill, so it's not an easy, but people still do that. My other concern is with the trails, uh, just looking at the Woodfin Park off Riverside Drive where things are not paved, it is very difficult for people to walk their dogs, we'll go for walks, go for bicycles, without having at least a macadam, a blacktop thing. I know what you're saying, trying to keep it natural, but I'm being realistic and practical that if we're not putting sidewalks in, I think we have, should have some form of paving as a, as a pathway, because people like to walk, and nowadays everybody likes to ride bikes. That's the new thing. So if we're going to eventually be able to tie into our Woodfin Greenway, Blue Way paths. I mean, bicycles, people would love to be able to jump on a bicycle. And being just stone or macadam, I mean, they had it down at Carrier Park where part of it was just dirt and stone. And I went down there a lot and rode it. It's just not fun to be on. I mean, I'm not a heavy duty mountain bike. I like to ride my blacktop. Yeah. So I, I would think my suggestion would be that we should, you should have them paved at least. That's um, just my opinion. Yep, different, different from the the river and uh, I guess the greenway running alongside the river these trails are not going to be flat I mean there's some some terrain that we're, they're going to have to mm -hmm. tra traverse we see that we really see these as being more like hiking trails in some sections to get down to some of those creeks um, there there is significant terrain and um, we're doing our best from an infrastructure standpoint to avoid that. Um, so, you know, that that's why we're make, we're proposing that, that decision. A lot um, of that can be washed away though with the heavy rains. Sure, and there's certain sections with steeper slopes that we would certainly consider paving that. And then as we drop down to the creeks, it changes to a different material. You got 4,450 feet of sidewalk you're not putting in. I'm just basing that on like a hundred hundred dollars a linear foot. That's that's almost four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Right. That could be utilized for those trails. It's also mentioned in this report that you were not allowing public to have be on those trails. And we I'm we wondering were, why. At this point, I think it's a private community and, and we we quite honestly haven't had that decision with the developer. It was something breaking. they're out of the country this week and he brought it up and at this point I don't want to make that decision on their behalf. Um, uh, and I'm not quite sure how she's going to feel. She and Charlie are going to feel about that, but uh, we, can, we can certainly continue to have that conversation. Um, I may be getting ahead, but can you give us any idea of the price of the uh, both the townhomes and the uh, individual single family? Sure. I, I think at the public meeting they were saying high threes to high fives, low sixes. High threes um, to high fives. Yeah. Or for the single family product. Single family. I don't okay. think we ever had a discussion about the townhomes, but I, I, can, um, I can imagine. Next question is: Does the developer intend to hold on to a lot of the properties? herself uh, and you know in order to you know make rental not that I'm aware of and currently uh, like short-term rentals are not allowed in Mount right. Ridge so 
that that's not something we discussed, and I don't think that's their intention. Do you know anything point. about the um, the HOA? Um, because we've had other situations where the developer has uh, held on to enough units that they control the HOA, and the residents have had you know little say. Um, and do you have any idea whether they're are they going to make the HOA put the residents in charge? I, I cannot answer that at this time. With uh, with your units going to 300 from 176, is there? All right, let's let's say now inflation's coming back down. In my opinion, I see costs starting to come back down. Maybe it's maybe it's not. I, I'm just a layman here, but if costs come down and the infrastructure prices come back down, are you willing to look at? reducing the amount of units back down to that 176 range or, or is this going to be pretty much in stone the 300 um, I don't think I'm going to ask Ricky this question because I don't think they're going to be allowed to with the zoning if we give us a conditional proof or this new zoning they're going to be required to stick to their numbers correct no because it's just over 20 units I think it would be basically the same plan. So if somebody, we, we won't make them build 300. That'd be the most they could build be 300 units. Okay. But I mean, if it, it come in and they found bedrock or something and or some bad soils and they wound up at 295, you know, that's fine. It, the, it may shift. What we'll be looking for is not a substantial or significant change in the layout of the development. Okay. And we okay. would not allow them to add 301. So. But yeah, they could be 295. It could shift down a little bit. Occasionally, that could happens. it be 176. So I mean, is that yeah, it, yeah, it, it could, could, but it, but it's very definitely dropped that much in our experience. So usually, there's a a four or five percent deviation. Yeah, I, I don't think infrastructure prices are going to come down back down to the 176 <laughs> range. But I was hoping to see less cars being out on to uh, Riverside Drive. I'm really glad you're thinking about the cost, though, because not just your cost, but the cost of the people that are going to yeah. hopefully become residents. Uh, I mean, it, it was certainly a shift in product deliverable, for sure. Um, and we were just trying to find a way to resolve it. We, we kept saying, oh, what if we go back to this plan? I'm, well, it's increasing infrastructure, road lengths. <laughs> and the, it, we were fighting, fighting what we were trying to accomplish. Um, a couple th other things I want to point out, not questions, but clarity, that um, out of the 89 acres, I think that we said 38 acres is being disturbed via infrastructure, stormwater management, utility corridors, everything. So there's 52 acres that we're not touching. Um, Ricky brought up earlier today when he called, he said we had 25 acres that we'd commit to preservation for for um, open space. Well, we have 52, and then we just said, well, we'll commit to half of that. We need to give ourselves some flexibility. Um, and so we just picked a number. So uh, where that gets designated, we don't know. We'd love to have your input on that. I kind of start to see see some locations where in a couple pockets that I think we should um, but you know I think that's something that we can continue a conversation with and there was one other about connecting phase two and three um, the rendering doesn't do it justice but through here there's a series of creeks and uh, between phase two and three the audience there, there's a series of them here and um, crossings are expensive um, we also would have to go through uh, NC DEQ permitting process Army Corps of Engineers all that good stuff so we are doing our best to avoid those environmental impacts one because of the cost and one the the time frame and the headache involved in it. so there were previous plans, not the previously approved, but prior to that, that had a crossing through there. We've eliminated that. Um, and in, in lieu, I think that's a pocket we could preserve for open space. I think uh, on the backside towards Altura and Goodman, we could preserve that corridor. 
So um, all the other ones have a significant amount of uh, kind of stormwater infrastructure pocketed here and there. So we don't want to designate that as open space. We want to keep that separate from the acreage that we designated. So the 52 acres then that you're talking about would be re remain untouched, no vegetation or trees removed? Correct. Yeah. Yep. In the, the plan, yeah, you when you see that there, see those creeks? It's flipped. Yeah. And we'd have to drop down significant and then where do we cross? So those, those um, lots look like they're pretty drawn out and, and as you said you've got 45 and 55 lot widths and then the depths vary. Um, do you have a planned setback for the development of the, of the houses themselves? Like how much is a front we do. yard, so, et cetera? Um, we're re uh, requesting a minimum of 25 feet from the edge of pavement. That's adequate enough. A parking space is 18 feet deep. That's adequate enough to get a vehicle off and park and not be in the street. So we're, we're saying uh, 25 from the edge of pavement. Um, in our planning, we had six or 10 foot side yard setbacks based on the footprints of the anticipated product type, but we're requesting five. And then we didn't have a rear setback because we're not going to get down there. It's, it's dropping off the ridge, so we didn't specify where you're set back. I'm not totally familiar with this fire marshal requirement thing with the, the more than two entrances. So if they would require more than two entrances, would phase... They would require more than one. More than, okay, more than one. For two total. Now, with phase three, so phase... One, two, and four. I understand you can have that connection throughout Terra. Does phase three, because it does not have hundred homes in its one section, not have that same requirement for the fire marshal? Correct. Or is it the whole project overall has to have that? Just that single entrance. Okay. Yeah. So and that's that, okay. That phase is less than hundred. Okay, and, and fire marshal's happy with that. Correct. Okay. So really? for all intents and purposes, we could build a phase one's that spur road coming from Riverside to Altura. That's phase one and all the homes associated with it. We could build that. Um, we could build the spur to the phase two and build all those homes, jump over to phase three, build that, do that, and then either we resolve that or we sprinkle phase four. Okay. So that does not get triggered until you're above 100 built homes. 100 and one access path. Okay. And I, I'm assuming, but your duplexes, they're side by side, not above and below? Okay. So those uh, uh, those road widths, if if there's not um, if there's not sidewalks and the setbacks are are that short on the on the houses, I just wonder if there's any room for either a wider road so that they're you know, without having to go and build. An actual sidewalk distance, if it can just widen the road a little bit to give bikes and and cars and dog walkers more space than you would on a typical road. I mean, I guess that that could be a possibility. It it pushes our fill slopes. I mean, it pushes the houses further out. So you know, when we start dropping off these ridges and it's existing two to one slopes, if you go. Five feet. That's two and a half feet. So we're talking about two and a half, three feet vertical feet for every unit. So it, you you don't think about those little things, but it starts. It really goes and, and it could be worse than that because our field slopes for our road development. If you look at the civil grading plan, it's amazing how tight the grading corridor is associated with this road. I think we've done a really good job laying it out to minimize that infrastructure grading impact. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking about the safety. It's, they're all really curvy roads, curvy corners, and little kid on a tricycle is going to get run over. That's, that's what I'm seeing. Well, I, I would also say a lot of these roads are 15% um, slope, so it's, 
it's not going to be your standard subdivision road that's flat and I wouldn't let my uh, three, four, five year old drive on 15% road. Um, utility allocations. Um, we had previous approvals for water and sewer. The, ironically, sewer allocation request was for 300 and we don't have to go back to them. It's just phase development. Water, we did, we did not get the allocation for um, 300, but that's in the hopper and we're waiting to hear back from them. Have they given any preliminary approval at all? Or? Oh yeah, they gave, well they gave us approval previously and based on their capacities, we don't anticipate it. Okay, that's my question. They have the capacity for it, that's, yeah. okay. My understanding of the water, you applied to Asheville for water, is that correct? Um, why not Woodfin? <laughs> the Woodfin water infrastructure in that area is kind of small. Um, and it's actually not very close to the site. It's actually up kind of behind uh, the neighborhood that these gentlemen live in. And we don't, I don't think we have direct access to it. Uh, we have spoken with Woodfin, we've spoken with Woodfin and Asheville. Um, there's even a possibility in the future that it'll tie through Altura and Woodfin may get another connection to the Asheville line and, and purchase water that way. But it's, the Woodfin connection was not gonna be feasible. Well, I know for a fact, that when you uh, everything is equal from the standpoint of water that Woodfin water is cheaper than Asheville water and Weaverville water okay so I'm assuming you'd have to run pipes up Riverside access from uh, the we uh, for the Woodfin water but in speaking with the executive director, they would entertain at least talking with you about the water situation because I personally would like to see Woodfin benefit from the water instead of Asheville. And I, if it costs more, I'm sure you can roll it into the infrastructure cost, you know, that's what the, that's what developers do. <laughs> that's that's been part of the problem, <laughs> making this a viable. So yeah. so I think we've been before the, the town of Woodfin. This is the third time for this project. And well, there's a new there's a new executive director over there now. There is. And uh, I think he's really working hard to make sure that it's a good viable situation. I will, I will reach out to them. There will be some substantial improvements to that line, I believe. It's a, it's a six inch line. I don't think the pressures are very good. Uh, if he's willing to make the pressures good in that area, then sure. I, I, I think we would prefer Woods and Water. I guess that's the short answer. Well, I know Woods and Water is actually better <laughs> than Asheville Water, for sure. I'm not sure about Weaverville, but <laughs> I mean, Asheville even draws theirs out of the uh, Mills River. Yeah. And you, you got uh, forever chemicals in that thing, where ours comes from aqu aquifer. So I think I think we did it years ago when we came here, and we just kept updating it, that that path since we started the project. Yeah. So I would just like to see you make contact with them and talk with them about it. I think that's all I had. Any more questions for the board for the project team? Mm -hmm. um, let's see, we covered sidewalks. We did cover. Okay, we have to probably have that for public comment. Okay, yep. Sidewalks. Um, all right, we can have further discussion on our questions, I guess, with amongst ourselves. All right, at this time, then, if we have no more questions for that, we would like to open this uh, up to public comment. Um, Okay, uh, I think it's John Averett. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, would you like to, you want to speak? Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. All right, cool. yeah. Ricky, do we have to swear in the public or we just? No, no, this is legislative. All right, can you just state your name and address for the record, please? My name's John Averett. I live at 11 Goodman Road, which is uh, right, you mind if I touch your 
<laughs> touch screen here? No. Okay. So basically, um, right there, for, first off, I mean, these guys, as far as the development goes, you know, we had, we knew this was coming. We had a lot of trepidation. These guys have, have done their homework and put a lot of, a lot into it. It could have just been, you know, you guys could have butchered it and you, you didn't. So we really are appreciative of that. Um, I like the idea of the trails a lot. A uh, question I have uh, involves sewer largely because y'all are going to be using my yard to come through. Um, and I, I go down to my mailbox and I look and my yard looks easy, but going through the next lot, what's, what's y'all's plan with that? And we're I'm can, they, can they yes? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. So, so, so where I'm, I'm talking about is uh, for these guys that they know and they're basically coming right here. You have you to be out there. Right. Yeah, for y'all. But uh, so right, my my lot's kind of right here along the road here, and then this next lot, it's nice and flat. The sewer line that I saw on the plans is going to come in here. It's going to cross the creek um, above above the creek. And then go under the road and it's going to go kind of down along the creek through my property and then it either is going to have to I, I don't know what happens there that and that's my question yeah. you're right that's that's a tough spot that's the toughest spot of, of probably at the whole development um, we anticipate that being bored for about 200 feet. Okay. Um, it will be a, uh, a bore with a, you know, a large diameter bore with the casing and, and the pipe. So basically um, pulled through. through Goodman. Yeah. Uh, well, so uh, the big rock bank there that comes off of Goodman into that person's yard will be, will bore through that section, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If that makes sense to y'all. But um, yeah, it's, it's, that's the toughest. Probably that's part of the whole development right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, my other question is, uh, is, is there any consideration from y'all's perspective of traffic lights, or, or would that be more of a DOT kind so, of thing? I can speak to that personally. <laughs> yeah. but, so I live in Riverwalk, and okay. we are right on Riverside Drive. And we have a blind corner. We're the opposite, and it's a real bugger to get in and get out. Right. We're working, trying to work with the DT, DOT in the town. Not an easy thing. Our HOA, we're actually putting up money to put a flashing warning light because it's not going to be a traffic light. We're just going to have a notification that says someone is coming to this intersection. Please slow down. That's basically right. simple terms. But you're still talking forty grand to do that. Um, I can't speak for the project, but I know the DOT is not interested in our end of the world to put any kind of traffic light up. And it would be a state DOT. It's not local Woodfin, and it's a, it's been an uphill battle for us. But they can speak to what they're trying to do, but it's a problem. Yeah, it's so it's let's just be real careful so that we're following all you know real followers. <laughs> um, why don't we ask all the questions? Okay. If possible. Gotcha. Then we will have either Ricky or the applicant or the board answer. Because we have certain rules that say you can speak for three minutes. Okay. Gotcha. Things, okay. So many fun things. Like Sorry, Marie. I don't, I'm not aware of these things. Uh, don't talk know. often. So you had you had two questions that you had yes. so far around the so sewer. One was answered. Lights. Answered. Yeah. And you were you don't even have to question. You can feel free to just make statements. These are my concerns. Here's John. Oh, something. So are there other concerns or questions that you uh, have, things you want to bring up? No, sir. No. I, I got little boys and I was thinking long game for they're going to be driving and you know my wife and babies pull out of there and I just think about thing, things like that and traffic lights and obviously the potential for a lot of a lot of cars so it was just a question really. okay. 
Thank you. Um, we also have a appears to be Jim DeBarty. Yeah. I get it right. Yeah. So we're going to give you a. If you could state your name and address for the record, and then yeah. three uh, minutes. Jim Barty, fifty-one Goodman Drive. Uh, I live further up on the look back of it. Um, I don't think I have questions. I think I have statements that I didn't think about till I just got here today. So I don't even know how firmly I feel them, but uh, the the potential trails being public. I understand why I might like that, but then I also think about I live in this very small community on Goodman Road where there might be 12 houses on that whole road. Um, we're already going to have several hundred new people next to us that will be neighbors. I don't know that I love the idea of then opening that up to however many more people that aren't even going to live there being moving around in that area. Um, so I kind of kind of feel like I might not like those being published, um, even though I know that means technically I wouldn't be allowed in there either. Um, so that's one statement. Second statement's about the water. Uh, yeah, our water like is um, is poor infrastructure up on Goodman. Uh, I didn't know. I don't know the details of it, but the way you described it, that sounds right small pipes um, I know the rumor on our road is that the that the uh, that they won't run any more water for any new lots on Goodman either now that's probably the older uh, group and I would imagine even in the newer group they probably wouldn't run new water for one lot on Goodman but if there's a whole infrastructure uh, a whole development of hundreds of uh, houses then I would probably uh, like having our infrastructure improved as part of that. So those are my two statements. Thank you. Okay, this time I will close the public section, public comments section. Um, do we want to have the project team answer any concerns or that's it? Or that's up to y'all if you want them to address the statements. They're here to address those statements. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, while you're here, let's let them answer the questions and maybe you can, is there anything, do you have any answers for the public? Or any responses for public at this time? I think that uh, the results of the updated TIA, the developer's going to be responsible for doing those per DOT's direction. Otherwise, uh, DOT's going to tell them what they want or don't want. So with that, a TIA describes access points density and also describes off-street improvements at certain intersections, maybe a mile down the road. That's the words I heard you. I thought you were going to say more or two words. Where they have to make uh, improvements, a turn lane or something at another intersection. So that's all described in the TIA. Do okay. they do traffic studies in that TIA? I mean, do they actually count the number of cars oh, yeah. going yeah, through on a daily basis? Yeah, we have a transportation basis? consultant that performed all that, and we submitted 10 times to DOT and finally got it to where they were happy, and there was a final decision. But now you have to do 11. Now we got to do it all over again. <laughs> and so, you know, it's very expensive. And uh, the developer wants to have some reassurance from you all before she starts spending more money. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Ricky, I guess at this time we're going to discuss I guess, yeah. our thoughts. I want to roll down through the conditions for okay. that since we've we've talked a lot about the project. I'm like, let's just kind of like put everybody's eyes on the Exhibit D project conditions. I'm sorry, we're doing scrolling here, but um, I want to get down there to that. So uh, I think, you know, they're, they're standard, but there's about a page and a half here. But just number one, it just says it identifies the PIN number that's 89.72. Number two it says it's going from Mountain Village to Mountain Village CZ. Uh, number three says it's a maximum of 300 single family and duplex home lots and includes the infrastructure shown on the plan. 
Uh, number four, there's a small community park and a yoga overlooked are included and they're maintained by the HOA. Um, number five, again, about the stormwater facilities, which are, which are required by our stormwater ordinance now. They're maintained by the POA. Ricky, can I stop a second? Can we yes. go back to four? Yeah. I wasn't aware. I guess I missed it's that. Just, there's a little small part that's identified on there. It's just in the layout. Just okay. to ensure that there's a part, there's a common area identified on the plan. And that is going to be limited to just the residents? Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's a private property, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it says yoga. I didn't know yeah. that's going to be a that's business. Probably, it's no, business. Just, that's my yeah, point. Yeah, no, no, yoga just for, just, just like an outdoor recreation. Oh, okay. It's for the residents. Not yeah. a business building. Not a business. No, no, okay. No. Uh, number five is about the stormwater facilities. Six is that they have to obtain a zoning compliance permit from Marie Biddix, and she will check for height and setbacks. Um, Marie does a fantastic job. Number seven, we talk about setbacks. This is where we mentioned 25 feet from the front edge of pavement, zero in the rear, five feet from side, and 25 feet from abutting the exterior project boundary. So I think I added the 25 foot exterior project, but there's no lots that really back up to the side, outside. Um, number eight, the minimum of 25 acres of open space provided. Uh, and it says there's no land disturbance or tree removal be permitted in those areas. So as he mentioned, it was 52 acres left over, so they're going to have 25 not touched. Uh, number nine is there's 39 acres or 43 and a half percent of the site is proposed to be disturbed. So it's limiting that. I, uh, I bumped the numbers up just a little bit above what Jason provided on the site plan, just to give a little bit of play, but it's a, 43 and a half percent uh no more than 12 acres or 13.4 percent of impervious surface uh mount village is a lot more permissive is actually 70 percent impervious limit uh they're doing 13.4 uh number 11 restates the zone of code 35 feet max height uh 12 uh there's just one or two entrances off Riverside Drive. Again, that's DOT. Uh, they're all access, number 13, they're all access from the internal streets. So we're not having houses coming off of Riverside Drive or Goodman. We just don't want all those additional turns, people stopping out the road. Uh, 14, uh, road connection to the adjacent property, which is Altura in this case whenever it's built on the approved site plan. So we want to make sure that there was one if that is developed. Uh, 15 uh, street trees are required in Mountain Village. They can either plant trees or if there's existing vegetation like along Riverside Drive or Goodman that's left, they can identify trees and we'll use them as street trees. That's just a requirement. Um, 16, we don't have any signage but we just kind of restated that it's a residential community. It's like a 32 square foot sign on each side at every entrance. Will there be, uh, I asked the project, is yeah. there yeah. going to be a sign at your development? Oh yeah, I'm sure there will be. Okay, yeah. so there yeah, will be. Yeah, yeah, but that falls under this one. Yeah, it falls okay. under, so it was just saying that they'll follow that, that it would be what was allowed. It's about 32 square foot sign when I looked at Mount Village for that zone. Um, Jason, now here's 17, we'll make sure everybody, I just want, so I said that the modifications are sidewalks are not included. However, they're including the interior path and trail network is provided. And that's why he'll need to go back and talk to Teresa about the second sentence. The public will be granted use and access to the trail parallel to Goodman Row in lieu of the public sidewalk. And the reason why I want to point that out is the applicant has to agree to all these conditions for them to be in this exhibit. And then if when it gets to town council, if they want to strike something, then the town council can vote up or down based on the conditions that are agreeable to. So, I mean, I can't, I put that on there, but. You're, you're saying just that. Just that alignment. Parallel to Goodman. Yeah, just parallel to Goodman. Yeah, just that one little section uh, along Goodman that would be basically from somewhere up near Altura's entrance back to Riverside Drive, not all the development. That's not the intent of staff is to say, every street i mean every trail is open to the public just something that would be parallel near that creek to allow some sort of future walk or off-road alignment 
so we can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just thinking, looking forward. Like I said earlier, looking forward so that if Altur is built out in the future and there is like a potential for a bike to ride down the street, somebody to walk down the street, they could at least continue that path on back to Riverside Drive. And hopefully, if there's multimodal improvements of some sort on Riverside Drive, they can access it. So that's the intent there by me and staff. Uh, 18, uh, we're just saying that all recommendations from the updated TIA shall be followed and implemented. So if there is a required left turn lane into the development, then that's what they'll do. If there's a required left turn lane at Goodman, then they would do that. So it's kind of a, it's a risk they're taking to let us put that one on, the, on them because we don't know. I don't know how far upstream or downstream DOT looks at roads. They might go way down to Elk Mountain to look at traffic impacts. They do. Yeah, so they go as far down as Elk Mountain. So if they said you have to signalize Elk Mountain at Riverside Drive, then. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's that's just say that's kind of a very broad. I just want to make sure that's a very broad open implications for them. Uh, 19 final technical review so what that means there is I would be looking for the street trees I'll be looking for the road cross sections I'll be looking for um, we'll be looking at the stormwater details for that project the the O&M agreements it's just more of that final plan everything will look through the code and make sure that everything's done before we issue the zoning permit or release it for grading with the county that's what 19 says. It's kind of a standard bullet plate. Um, 20 is just stating that they'll follow dark sky compliant light fixtures. Um, Jason, I throw this one. I don't know if you've seen it. We y'all said 15 foot. We were just asked if she would be interested in a 20 foot. I mean, I'm not. I don't know if me and Shannon will to dial the sword, but we were thinking with the undulations that it might require a little bit more cutting into the hillside. And you never know if that could require a small retaining wall, either holding back earth, and if there's something behind that, that you might need the extra four or five feet. But we're not asking for a dedication, but you could again ask Miss Carol. We could expand upon that, maybe, if we said 15, 15 foot permanent, 20 foot construction, construction or temporary yeah, okay. to accommodate grade. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All right, y'all. So, um, so you hear that one? We you don't have you don't have any houses coming down for that close no. Riverside Drive anyway, right? No. But no, just some sewer infrastructure in, in a couple of spots. Okay. We wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, then number twenty-two is just site design. The orientation is substantially comply. That's generally the framework. That's just a general fluffy one. Uh, 23, they get all the required local state permits. So if they're, like you mentioned, the stream crossings or piping of a stream, they have to get that. Uh, that's, and then finally, 24 is the conditional zoning is valid for two years. And it gives them two years basically to obtain their first building permit. So if they move forward the project, start uh, cement for grading, storm water, uh, then that'll kind of pick up the ball and keep this project moving forward into the future. So like you said, it might be every two years or move through phases, which is normal for a big project. They just need to act. We just want to go permit or any permit. Uh if we need to massage that one a little bit we can if we want to look at that. It says building permit if we need to look at that one, uh we can talk about that one between now and council. Are there grading permits that are separate from that or what okay. Yeah. Usually it's pretty it's, it's Start of the year, then yeah. Be for the first okay. And you could always talk to the board too if you would rather. Like we had one project recently where they were looking at a five-year, up to five years is most we can go for the sites, or we could do a three-year. We could change it to some other triggers. But um, I just wanted to kind of walk through because we've had a lot of questions that kind of dip back and forth into the conditions tonight. And I'll make sure that everybody seen the conditions and make sure the applicant knew what we had to. Um, I didn't want nothing to be missed. So if there's any other questions about the conditions, I'll be glad to answer that. Yes, sir, Mr. Hopkins. So on the roads, 
you put are you putting all the roads in at one time or are you going to do it by sections per phase per phase yeah that's very typical for that so. uh, okay I, I know you said that there aren't any um, uh, requirements for building materials or roof pitch or anything but on 22 you talked about the the building design and site design and orientation must comply with the preliminary site plans is that where there be approval for the the building style to uh, I just wonder if there's any approval by the before the issuance of the permits on the the final design of the units themselves should be architectural I think probably you think building design would be like more if it's like duplex style homes single family homes versus if they wanted to combine make it triplexes or something like that so design and the general layout only. yeah i guess yeah we would never we, we would not be able to change yeah the only time we've like yeah you know, we've been a couple rezones have come through and glenda's been seen a couple of those where people provide these illustrative uh, renderings and it, it's kind of hard you see more when we have like the senior housing facility where it's a little bit more binding where we can require like if they use wood or use stone right. but i i wouldn't be very comfortable to say that we're going to mandate from my perspective to mandate i mean they say if they want to say we say you gotta use craftsman style uh, right right i mean i it's just like you said I, you, you might see these these pictures of you know examples like they were earlier right yeah. that there would be the, some of these type of style homes yeah. and then and then you go look at some of the things that get built oh they're over on the Ch candler side of town they have eaves that i think are three inches wide or something like that and all the houses are next to each other i think they're made out of cardboard i don't know just yeah i don't know if there's any way we can avoid <laughs> you know the bait and switch <laughs> right from from the, what the housing development is going to look like versus what it's built property value is going to you know be severely impacted by you know our homes are going to be impacted by whatever split yeah. here. we can engage with the, the design team and the property owner between now and council and i can talk to shannon further i'm just not i don't feel super comfortable about it i don't want to mislead the board to thinking that yeah we can do that and get it on the conditions and you approve this you vote favor because i allude to that i, I don't want to misread mislead you there uh, but i'll be glad to talk to jason further we'll talk to miss carol further and find out if it's some sort of like standards or some sort of design architectural that she'd be willing to commit to but i don't want you to vote because i want to go talk to them about it sure yeah well you're yeah yeah I'm you're hearing, hearing my just, concern anyway. yeah yeah i'm hearing your concern i know what you mean i just i, I don't want to say that oh yeah we'll do it and then we can't and then you might not want to have voted tonight in favor or against based on what i said tonight okay. yeah no, you're i just don't want to mislead you i understand all right at that i will be quiet unless you have questions for me about the conditions or need to go back through the slides or another So, questions, concerns, communications? Yeah, if, if we're uh, listening to the applicant, we have to approve something tonight for them to go further. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I think that the conditions are pretty, the question would be, um, Ricky, uh, if we can, can we interact with him too while we talk? <laughs> the two, you, you mentioned a couple of the conditions that you were going to look further into. Or you were going to massage, or and I didn't note the numbers. Do you uh, remember what they were? Yeah, I think we was going to look at number twenty-four is the last one we just talked about about it being building permit, okay. and if it either we talk about extending the time, you know, two years to three years, or if it's uh, to say obtain, you know, you know, grading permits or something. How we want to talk to that? Would that have to be clarified before we vote on this tonight? Well, couldn't we word it such that we would approve the conditions if we uh, affirm that there will be more work done on and give the number of the conditions that would require that? I don't know that we could do that because then they could make changes that we don't approve. Mm -hmm. I think we have to kind of okay. set it in stone tonight. 
you're awfully complex to. I mean, if, you, if you're if it. you're comfortable saying that we we give them three years for the building permit, or we say that they uh, obtain their, you know, essentially you know do site development like grading and stormwater approvals, you know, obtain those in the next two years, grading stormwater approvals. I guess the concern I have is because listen to what that Altera program they put roads in and then walked away, right? Yeah. We don't we don't want that. Yeah. So um but what is fair from your end, I mean Yeah. But there's the no way I can stop a development. If that happens, developments go belly up, yeah. they bankrupt yeah. it. So that's they get so happened. far and it's it's a that's a good bones there to be built from if somebody's got a substantial good sub base, it might get a good deal and uh, it's on the dollar. <laughs> yeah, it pays on the dollar. So I don't we, we can't there's no way for us to guarantee. The only thing that we do on our end, I'll say this, is that if we plat, if we let the subdivision be platted, we will hold a bond or a surety from the development team. So if they did go bankrupt, that we could ensure that the roads got paved and sewer got installed. So that's about as far as we go. Like I don't know what's the deal with Altura because it looks like there's some lots platted, but right now with staff here we would not let any lots be platted without a surety in place or all the infrastructure in place to let be a functioning development would 36 months be a, a problem for you it's not me you you're, you can by state statute go up to five years okay. to allow up to five years um but i think again it's a challenging site i don't i think uh, Jason is kind of saying that 24 months is probably very challenging, and I don't know if you feel like 36 or 48. Come on, yeah, five years. Then I don't want to go five. Yeah, it gets risky. So, so I want to interject a little bit of reality in terms of time frame. If, if you all give a positive, go forward, and we get positive from council next month. Um, Brooks Engineering has a lot of work to do. They have to finish grading erosion control plans. They have to do stormwater plans. They have to submit those. They have to go through a review process, comment periods, revise. Uh, they got to get it on their schedule. Uh, st grading erosion control, stormwater, uh, water permits for the design of the water, not just allocations and sewer. So getting it on their schedule, three months design three to four months, review periods three to four months. We might not be ready to receive a permit for a year. And then assuming all the costs come back, we got to get on GC schedules and all that good stuff. So um, that that's just a reality of phase one. And then as that gets going, they'll be working on phase two paperwork while phase one's getting built. So. Um, I like a three-year period better than two, just based on that reality. Um, usually two is kind of a minimum, and we usually ask for five just to give ourselves flexibility. But I will tell you, um, this development and our client doesn't have time to waste because she, she and the development have wasted time, and we're here for the third time. Uh, so uh, we know that this wants to move. She wants to move. She's, you know all the pieces are falling into place so um that that's a reality from a you know time schedule standpoint so i would like to see that be a three-year period and just a phase one you know site grade and erosion control permit or something you know the initial permit that we need to start construction so so you're saying a three-year mark for the for that permit not a building permit you mentioned GCs. Are, are, are you going to have a set number of GCs? Somebody can't go in and just build their own home, right? Um, they have been in conversations with the developer to partner on this. So they, that's been going on for the last nine months, nine to 12 months. So the GC would purchase the lot and then get the permits? And I don't know how they're working it out, but there's a partnership involved there between the developer and but somebody off the street couldn't just go in and build their own home. Not at this point. And, you know, to answer your concern, there's going to be rules and regulations and guidelines. She's, she's a developer here. Um, 
completely different product. There's guidelines. They, they're building 300 of the these things. I mean, it's, it, there's going to be some standards. Yeah, just, yeah, just, just remember that. Just remember that this, when you, if it gets approved, that this product can always be sold too. Sometimes developments get sold. Yeah. So just. And this condition number 24, yeah. the 24 months, that's yeah. once they get the first permit, then that. Is, that would they're they're moving. Then they're good to go. Yeah, it's just it's this basically is a clause for if it got approved and just nothing happened. All right. Then it would say it would be somewhere where the town would trigger to say, all right, it's been 25 months we can look at rezoning that back to either Mountain Village or um, let it roll a bit longer. But you know, it just puts it by, it's just not open forever. Okay. For, for instance, our previous approval was for one year. That ended in February. Okay. okay. And so I'm not asking for a vote from the board, a vote from the board, but does anybody have concerns if we went to 36 months? I don't know. Just, just a generic high level but ask. Would we be going for building permit or like a building permit building permit or the just the first the first building right yeah well i think that's what they're saying they were suggesting 36 months and like some sort of like development approval like grading stormwater approval yeah. or something i thought it was one or the other what i'm concerned is we start tomorrow and that's a year of designing the permit mm -hmm. and then a year to build the road we're at two years period but once you get to that point yeah. you still have no whole year to get the first permit No, well, I mean, that's what we're going to go. We're going to go, go, go 36. Yeah, the perfect scenario would have been 24 months from getting the first building permit. And we might want flexibility. All right. I'd, I'd say 30, I think we should be able to keep 36, but keep the building permit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I would also, frankly, like to keep the 20 foot easement. Keep it what? Could you see? Keep the, on uh, number 21. 21. It's on the screen up there. Okay. I don't have any objections to that. Yeah, that's fine. 20 foot instead of 15? It's only an easement, and it's there's no, if the buildings were coming right down and being houses were being built on Riverside Drive, I would say, okay, we have a little bit more pushback, but it's kind of open space can, land. Can they do 20 feet? I mean, because <laughs> we're talking about some. But this 20 foot wouldn't impact your project at all, right? Because this is just an easement for the township. What is that? How is that going to impact your stuff? It would impact the frontage of the property, how much grading and clearing and uh, storm like drainage infrastructure land would extend from the TOT roads to make fill slopes and things of that nature. It's not cut and dry. Would, would that impact the, you know, the things that that space would be used for? It could be widening of a road to add a lane or add a, a to have the green belt sidewalk blue way green way thing go by or you know the shorter True. that goes right that we eat into that that space you know that that could be a bike lane so i guess i, I agree with the 20 feet is what i'm thinking i'm confused because there we're re requesting a 20-foot easement there shouldn't be anything on your end of the world to develop, correct? This is just if someone, if this DOT wants to come in, you would have to give them 20 feet of space and let them do their thing, correct? That wouldn't cost you anything. I mean, I, I don't have partner. I, mean, I don't think we're going to have partner over it. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, it's five feet and some areas are going to use 10 and you might use up to 20. I think in some cases you might need more than that, just depending on the PEDFAT facility. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think in some cases you might need more than that, just depending on the PED facility that's being proposed. So I, we don't have partner. I don't currently have I think what staff would suggest at 20 was just for the potential grading. If grading come out and fill or something is what we were thinking. But it is, it's just for multimodal. It wouldn't be for, uh, I don't think the intent is for road widening a Riverside Drive. It would be only for like a bike head type multimodal facility. Can you go, can you scroll up a little bit to the road? Uh, I'm sorry. No, I mean, but we're not asking them to make any other construction changes, so no. it's not going to cost them any more by going from 15 to 20 feet. Is my point? I, I, I don't know. They're, they're saying there's potentially stormwater or sewer, but I don't know. I don't think the intent was for us. It would just be an easement over that area, not you know necessarily. Exactly what those things are. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're probably fine. Yeah. Okay. 
Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I, it wasn't an intent for me to, like, because I offered 15, it's not the intent to exclude, you know, underground, other underground sewer or drainage facilities as much. Uh, the one that I wanted to scroll up to review was 17. So since, since it's not, uh, since sidewalks wouldn't be required and, and we have the, the smaller setbacks, there is a clause in here saying the interior network of trails would, so that's part of a, a requirement of the plan, right? But it doesn't necessarily speak to some of your thoughts about what the material is, whether it's paved or if it's. Yeah, I guess it's, since we're on that one, so I mean, so here's the question. If we're not going to require it be public access, well, that's the question. Do we want to have public access to uh, those trails? It's kind of, it, I'm, I'm listening, so it is kind of six of one, half a dozen other, because I guess I don't want somebody driving in my backyard, but then if I'm living in Woodfin, I want to go for a bike ride, maybe I do want to ride through. If I lived in there, I wouldn't want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, that's no. my. I don't think it would need to be public necessarily. That's in, in okay. interior to their neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, a lot of those houses backyard is going to be right. that. It's that's going through yeah. security risk. People's woods. Right? So the only places that I would think of it would be on the kind of perimeter, not going through the through the center, and where there's, you know, the uh, green space that they're talking about maintaining. Um, I could imagine. So instead of just having it come down to Goodman on that trail having it go over to that first um, access road, for instance. Um, still not in anybody's backyard. Um, four or five houses, maybe, I would say it's close. Um, I got on the screen, Scott. Do you want to no. point to where, where you're talking about? So I should they know. There's, you can't we're right, about we're talking about that dotted line, yeah. um, and then just continue with your left hand down and around to the access road. Does it go there? Okay. Down there. So there were, yeah, because we talked about like this section, so I'll talk about Jason. So he's talking about also continuing around down here. Again, we'll have to have the the conditions she has to agree to it as well. The popular has to agree. So, but yeah, we can and request that. Did I understand that the um, on the orientation of this map, the north eastern chunk is going to be maintained as green space up there. But the blue areas existing vegetation to remain. Um, so not over by the blue areas. No, yeah, um, that. He's talking about the, uh, oh yeah, they're, they're, the southeast. Yeah, I think that would be. And. Um, a, a good location for part and of that acreage. Yes. So I could I could conceive of it uh, going up at some point into that as well, so that it's just kind of a a U shape for folks to be able to walk along. Gives neighbors some pretty space to walk in, but not the entire access to the neighborhood. Gives um, that sidewalk along the front to be able to access, you know, get down there safely um, and just be up in that. Yeah. I, I don't want to speak for the developers since they aren't here today, but I think the intent of the trail along Goodman is to connect the spur to Altura mm -hmm. and the access to the future NCDOT improvements. The reality of that trail along Riverside Drive is if they grade that and provide bike and ped facilities at the Riverside Drive elevation, it's going to force that nature trail to be up on the slope and on those ridges closer than those homes. This is our best attempt at a graphic representation based on topo, but I think it could get close to those homes in that location. And where I see it being tying in is closer to the intersection of Goodman and Riverside Drive. Uh, and then also close to where it says zoning R10, where Goodman Drive peels off to to Altura. That would be a good place for a crossing over that creek from a, the Altura development to provide access for those folks to get to Riverside Drive. 
So I think there's an opportunity to provide that public access. And I would even say based on the terrain in there that we could even agree to pave that section along Goodman to accommodate public traffic from Altura and Goodman to, to Riverside Drive. Non-motorized traffic. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like a, a greenway trail. Yeah. yeah. Um, all the others, uh, I, I would hate to commit anything different. Okay. I see where he's talking about you know, <laughs> time in that section. Yeah. Oh, I, I understand and that. that gets I was an alternative path, basically. Which actually it was further. The Altura mm -hmm. uh, connection isn't until further up, just off the screen, right? Mm -hmm. So, Ricky, that okay. section that they talked about that we already. I think everyone is in agreement that is going to be open to public access. Can we put a note in there that that would? Yeah, I can. I'll add that in the bay condition. But yeah, that's that's the area right in here. This this that was the yeah, place the staff was most concerned about future connection. We'll, we'll name we'll name that Jimmy's way. <laughs> <laughs> be, I think it access. feels forward looking for future yeah. residents. Um, we don't want to box ourselves in and yeah i think watch us yeah, out. i think yeah, i think maybe glenn did mention too it's like we we can't lose all our sidewalks because eventually we won't have any pedestrian connections if we make too many waivers so i think if we have something like this we can at least provide that future connection whenever riverside drive gets something in uh it'll happen eventually <laughs> may not be alive for it but you know something <laughs> will happen. my kids will build it they'll be here in Okay. When they build a new bridge across the river. Exactly. <laughs> Any day now. But as far as uh, uh, the other conditions, I think that's the kind of the three that we wanted to okay. talk through. Is that correct? I think so. Was there any other concerns or any other conditions from uh, What about the water? I want to make them? sure that the, the water is explored for wood. Okay. And I guess the TIA that's coming up is going to dictate how many actual houses will be in the development so, uh, that's covered so um, so when you talk about exploring the water i want i want woodfin to be able to say no we can't do it or we can do it so give woodfin the option exactly first, not first just explore it but and if woodfin <clears throat> says yes we can do it then the developer is going to have to figure out how he's going to pay for it it rolls back into the number of units. There, go ahead. I'm sorry, I don't know if I can agree to that. I have no idea what's involved with upgrading their system. I'm not asking could, you to agree to it now. I'm just yeah. saying let's explore it. But that's what I'd like to see is I, I, let's I give Woodson an opportunity yeah. to get the water right. Sure. I can certainly explore it. I, I can't. You went a little further and said uh, that, that if Woodfin said yes, we can provide water, that we would pay for whatever it takes. I, I can't. I, I can't promise that. Um, I suspect that's it's a lot. We should, <laughs> that's something we should explore, though. Yeah. At that yeah. point in time. Yeah, I, I can. Yeah, I certainly will agree to exploring. You know, and going back to them, which you're right, new folks. So we'll see what they say. But. Yeah. So how would we write that in as a condition? First right of refusal from Woodfin uh, in terms of if Woodfin says yes, then bring the proposal back for approval or for decision? How do, how do we write that in? I don't think, I think we can to come back. Yeah, but, no. No. No, I think but I don't know how we can. The problem is going to be is we can say yes we want woodfin water if it comes back to be a dollar then it's no problem but if it comes back to be a million dollars that's going to be the problem and then their their permit says they can build but only if they go through woodfin water which i agree we all want that i just don't know if we can tie their hands well, yeah i think, I think, I think they need to work with woodfin water to find out what it's going to take from and then figure out what the cost is going to be and then Woodfin Water and the developer, they get together and work it out. I understand that, but I don't know how we could. Yeah, yeah I don't, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure because well, the utility is not the town utility. Out, then it reverts back to, to actual water. Yeah, it just typically water system. It's just a unique situation. I'll say that where you're having a little bit two water systems are overlapping that are 
really outside of their service boundary. I think I don't even think this property is in the Woodfin Water District at all. It's just it's in Woodfin, but it's not our department. So, uh, you know, it, it's kind of hard to require them almost make off-site improvements, and there's there's like a little bit of a limit. Like even like road infrastructure would be so far that we can't make them improve intersections. DOT can with the TIA, but I don't. I think there's probably not any harm having them look at Woodfin Water, but if they just, I think that just gives Woodfin Water the chance to say no. Yeah. And, and, or the chance yeah, to say no. But what if they're expensive? It. I mean, or the infrastructure required is really expensive. So right. it can't just be yes or no. It's got to be. Yeah. So what if we just put it? Develop. Yeah. As the condition we just put in that we're going to request them just to do uh, an investigation into it. Yeah. I mean, we can't require them yeah. to go to Woodfin sure, right. yeah, but. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay and with it's, the investigation, it's going to have to but get no. to them ultimately. Okay. We would like that, but but in in that case, I would suggest um, that we not bother putting that in, and we just take it on good faith because having that statement is you know, and they promise to look at the sky. No, if it, well, but the next if, six months. If, if you just put in if you just put in an investigation in, that at least requires that they call. did talk. Do, do, at if least they make a phone call. Right, and, and if Woodford <coughs> can no. make a deal, maybe Woodford would want to work with him. I don't know. It, it just does at least. It that, does at least say fine conversation. Was yeah, it's just that typically zoning is kind of like: Do you have public water? Yes or no. Do you have public sewer? Yes or no. We don't usually get into conversations about competing utilities. Yeah, come on. I would say they have they have public water. It's, it's asphalt, but we're just asking to see if. It can be switched to wood for the water. Yeah, so so I think the situ situation where we're at today is that had been pursued, and at the time and still today, there is not adequate capacity or pressure to even add one additional home to that existing infrastructure. So the next available is the city of Asheville, and that's what was pursued. And I still think that's the case today. So to what extent is public infrastructure have to be improved? To what extent? Length, pressure, size, everything. And how many millions of dollars is that going to cost? And I will guarantee it's over a million. You think it's that much? Oh, I think it's a, it could be in the tens of millions of dollars. How far, where are we going to tap into adequate pressure to then rebuild all this infrastructure? and? Who else is benefiting that? Probably a lot of people. So it's mm -hmm. almost, it's a, it's a, this is a public infrastructure. Yeah, it's a Woodfin uh, water decision. Um, for upgrade, sure. not a private developer. We have access to water currently, and we have the right to tap into it. Um, sure, I think we could make a phone call, and if it's a couple hundred feet, fantastic. I think we can make that work. If it's three miles, that, that it's not going to work. Yeah. I don't know how 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 long it is. I'm sure it's and so so I you know even though there's new folks in town and they have that desire to do it, doesn't mean the answer is going to be any different because it's still the same situation. I, I prefer I to just take it on brief faith. They're going to make a call. Yeah, we're probably better off just. Yeah, yeah. I think Marie was going to double check the ordinance, but I think you might remember one board adjustment case uh, we had. Where we're just basically looking forward to see if utility service is there. Like, do they, do they have water? Do they have the allocation? Do, is it available? Or do they have sewer or septic? Not really. We don't get into like, you have to have the permits, just is it available? And then we kind of move on. I just think we have to be very careful. We can't just condition anything. Right. You can't just add a condition for any particular okay. thing. It has point. to be very yeah. specific. It has to meet the guidelines of the ordinance. Okay. And this is very much outside of that. So it has to stay within the guidelines of the ordinance and um, traffic impact analysis is, is there. Um, mm -hmm. All of those things, this, this is falling outside of that. So we need to be very careful okay. um, that we don't go outside of it. So we can just take it in good faith to ask him to call you need to leave that part outside of this hearing. It isn't part of this hearing. 
So. so we need to be sure that they have access to water, which they're saying which we do, and that's it. Staff did. Okay. It's here. We've provided that. They've discussed that with you. Um, but this this section, everything about conditional districts, it's right here. We've got conditions right here. Um, but this is extremely important that we follow. We've all been through the field this, this year. We're getting ready to go through another based on things that were not followed. So we want to be very careful to just make sure we're, we're yeah. sticking to this. Yeah. So, so based on that conversation, I think that condition would be out of the scope of our ability. So I think we should take Mr. Hansen's suggestion and take their word for it. And the engineer says they'll make a phone call. They'll talk to them. Maybe, Wood, maybe someone from here can call Woodfin Water and say, talk to these people and get a conversation going. But that's out of our scope. Does that make sense, Marie? And as soon as you're done, just a reminder, you will close the public hearing. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, I did that. You don't need to be sorry. You haven't done that yet. You're not. You're still talking. But when you all are done and you're ready to deliberate okay. amongst yourselves, mm -hmm. you'll close the public hearing, and then you'll be done talking to everybody here, including Ricky. Okay. And that's and well, you'll, we'll you'll to say it is we're not close the public hearing. Okay. This time, that will then be no more questions. So, Just a reminder, since we've all kind of been at the So does the board still have questions for anyone outside the board? Is everybody okay if we close the public hearing? At this yeah, point? I think we, we answered the other question that I had, which I think was similar to yours on the, the density being, this would be a maximum of 300, mm -hmm. which would, would actually be dependent upon the yeah. output of the TIA. Right. Right, okay. So we don't have to clarify that, do we? Because according Cause to what we're told, they can go lighter, but can't go any denser. Right. Okay. Got it. That's my understanding. We'll go with that. Yep. So no further questions. Okay. So then it's uh, 8 p.m. At this time, we're going to close the meeting to the public public portion of the meeting, and we will discuss this amongst ourselves here. Um, I think we covered a lot. Do we still have questions that we want to talk about or concerns? Does the public stay to listen to us talk? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on the live mics too. <laughs> I know. Um, I think they've answered pretty much most of my questions. Um, Ricky had a pretty good list of all the conditions. Um, we we're going to make two month, 24 months to 36 months. Yep. I think I had a copy of. I think the rest were as proposed. You may have a better copy. We have a copy of proposed order. I can put it back up there if you want me to. Uh, that would be. Okay, this is what I would be signing That's if we approve it. Yeah. This is yeah. not the actual. Yeah, no. Okay. I've got the conditions back up here for you. Okay. So does any so anybody on the board? Do we have any more questions with the conditions? The only one being changed, to the best of my knowledge, is the 36 months from the 24 months. What number is that? 24. Coincidentally, 24. Just one question on the uh, mm -hmm. setbacks. The five feet on the side, so that, that would mean you're going to have about 10 feet between homes, right? Minimum. Minimum. Could be more, but minimum, yeah. my understanding. Okay. Any other, Chris? That was that was actually my concern when I was asking about the 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 density, you know, with that being a ten foot width. The property is forty five, right? So you're taking five off each side, so there's thirty five. So the the houses are probably would be that close together. I mean, that's I would think so. Mm -hmm. And I just remind us that we need affordable housing. And although I'm not sure three to five hundred is affordable, we've <laughs> got to be willing to understand we're not going to get. Great that's right. Lots. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's true. They're in a neighborhood like this, the well, and the other. So the other side of the coin we'll say is if they give us more side yard setbacks, then we chew up more of the land. So yeah. we yeah. have more green space and less. Yeah. Disturbed trails walking through. Yeah, less mm -hmm. disturbed area if we have less yard space. I mean, 
people want big yards, but a lot of people want small yards. Mm -hmm. It does have nice, I mean, a lot of vegetation that will be yes, left. Yes, I think it's wonderful. It'll be nice. Yeah, the, the disturbance percentage is definitely good. All right, now I'm going to ask, go ahead, I'm sorry. Is somebody going to make a motion? Well, that's what's I'm going to ask a real difficult question. Who would like to attempt to make a motion? <laughs> there it is. Oh. I knew we had one somewhere. I couldn't find it. Yeah. Uh, would someone like to, uh, let's see, so am I allowed to ask you a question about the motion? I know we closed the, I'm not supposed to do that. Okay, well, no, the only question I ask is the, the, the 24 to 36. Do I have to put that in there or is yes, that? we do. Yeah, I would put that under either modify or like one okay, or two. Okay, that's fine. Modify. So would someone on the board like to make a motion to include the change to 36 months for item number 24? So well, yes. <laughs> yeah, we have to read yeah, it. Someone, has, someone, someone okay. actually has to read okay. it. Okay. 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 Go ahead. I move to approve the conditional zoning of 89.7 acres as shown on exhibits A and B from Mountain Village to Mountain Village conditional zone subject to the conditions identified in the exhibit D project conditions with the exception of changing condition number 24 from 34 months to 36 months and find that the request is reasonable, is in the public interest, is consistent with the Town of Woodfin, comprehensive plan, and meets the development needs of the community in that the request, one, encourages walking and promotes connectivity within the development through an internal network of trails with a link system of open spaces, two, promotes economic development by providing compatible infill development of undeveloped properties within the town that reduces infrastructure costs while allowing open space to be preserved. Three, preserves Woodfin's environment and character by preservation of a significant portion of the parcel as open space. Four, encourages low impact cluster development that preserves environmentally sensitive areas such as rich stops, steep terrain, and areas adjacent to streams and creeks. I second. <laughs> okay. That motion. So we got a. Go ahead. Scott. I'd like to offer, I think, an amendment that we talked about but didn't stick in. And I believe it was accepted over here, not just uh, it's in number 17. Um, the amendment would change letter A, second sentence, to read the public will be granted use and access to the trail parallel to Goodman Road in lieu of the public sidewalk, comma, and that part of the trail will be paved or made of a non-permeable surface. surface, period. Um, so I'm gonna go back to Glenda, are you okay with that? Yeah, I guess, uh, you guys okay? <laughs> I was over for some bike jumps. <laughs> 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 All right. So, uh, Chris, you second that? Or you yeah, I'll second that motion to add the, the clause for the okay. paving that section okay. on 17A. Do we have questions or concerns about the motion from anyone on the board? Uh, if nothing, nothing heard, so we have a motion. So I guess. Um, I'm going to change things a little bit the way we do things. I want to take roll to do our voting okay. so we can be clarified as to not just everybody raising hands. So, um, Mr. Deroni. Aye. Uh, Mr. Hopkins. Aye. Ms. Overbeck. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mr. Hansen. Aye. Myself. Aye. So the motion is unanimously approved, or the mo yes, and unanimously approved. Good luck. Congratulations. All right. So this will go to the August 15th town council meeting because we have, we don't put them immediately like in two weeks. Okay. Uh, and obviously next week's council meeting because of July. So we'll go August 15th. Obviously we'll prepare the conditions, update them, send them to the applicant. And those obviously just to make sure y'all know, just full disclosure, those could change a little bit by the time when they get to town council or at town council, but we'll prepare that what you approved and put that in the town council report for August 15th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me go back to our agenda here. I think we're good. July 11th, new business legislation, nothing. Yes. Okay. I move we adjourn. Oh, I second. <laughs> There's in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Next um, Real quick.
Oh,